the biggest one for me is I could have been a better dad. Me now enjoying parenthood for what it is, I wish I did then. Mm. I wish I had the memories of, yeah. Take some time, man. I just wish I had the memories of with my first doing that. Because like, the way I feel it, I feel it as a spitefulness in myself. I feel like, why have they got the best of me? And she didn't, because she deserved it. <laughs> when we just had our baby, it's like, this might time again, and I shouldn't have had to think like that, but I did. So I've made sure I've put my fucking all into it. It's shit, but all I can do now is be the best dad I can be to all of them, and I am. When you mix that with years and abuse of alcohol in your liver and drugs and then steroids, it's not a fucking good mix. And there's only so long you can do it for. And what scares me is if I took that out of my life. I don't know. I don't know now. I mean, I couldn't tell you here. I'm never going to do it again. I can't. I can't say that. What What's happened's happened because we can't turn back time. But you sound like you got your shit together. Yeah. What you're capable of right now is much more powerful than trying to bring something back that. You can yeah, of course back. it is. And I mean, like, there's been times in my life where I have thought about suicide. And how, I look at the scale, I'm a guy that enjoys life. I love life. Yeah. And I love my kids. And if it weren't for them or I didn't enjoy life, I wouldn't be here now. 100% I wouldn't be here now. Yeah, you know, a dog has to chew. Yeah, you get a puppy, it wants to chew, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, but what you do is you give it something to chew, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to chew, it's going to chew all sorts of things. So rather than going, don't chew, because that is impossible to do, yeah. you go chew this. Yeah. So then it starts chewing this, which is his own toy or her own toy, whatever. When it has its own toy, then it's going to chew that and that's that problem sorted. Yeah. You know, with, with you, if you're saying that you have a, an addictive personality, with addictive personalities, you have to feed them. Brad, we've already agreed I won't call you Bradley, but I've just snuck it in there. <laughs> but Brad Perry. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming on, man, first of all. Thanks for having me, mate. Yeah, it's really nice to meet you in person. Um, we met on Tinder, didn't we? And, uh, we've, <laughs> had a good, there, we've had a good chat since then. <laughs> um, but no, it's great to meet you in person and everything. Obviously, you know, we'll go through your story and everything today. Yeah. Um, just for the listeners, though, tell them who you are and what you do. Yep. And why you're here. Uh, it's Brad Perry. I'm currently in the stage of another off season bodybuilding show. Um, that's my sort of thing, um, but I'm here to sort of bring awareness to, I say the younger generation, but maybe for anyone, any age, that my story is sort of going to inspire or help to come away from negative impacts of their life, going yeah. through maybe drug abuse, alcohol addiction, or any sort of thing they're struggling with. Yeah. Um, like we say, it's all about mindset, so there, there's lots of barriers in life and curveballs, and there's lots of things to get them out of that. Yeah, so. yeah, and no, I appreciate it. Obviously, you, you, you've seen quite a few of our podcasts. Yeah. You? Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate you reaching out because, and I like what you said there because it is, it is about bringing awareness. Like, there's a lot of people struggling. Let's just put it as a, bar uh, as a category of struggling yeah. in whatever way, shape or form that is. And I think it's, well, I know, it's very important that people approach these things as opposed to brush them under the carpet. Yeah, hundred percent. Because uh, I've done that for many years. Yeah, and, uh, and I have. Yeah, you know, we we all, I think we all have. And and let's be honest, nobody that's sitting in a successful seat hasn't done that because we've all at some point gone, "Fuck, I fucked up there. I'm going to leave it." Or do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, that we all do that at some point, right? Yeah. Um, but just to just to sprinkle on, like you know, who you are and what you do and, and everything. So for the guys who don't know, I mean, enlighten me as well. What, where are you in bodybuilding? What what sort of category and area do you like? Uh, so we're in novice bodybuilding at the minute, uh, in the amateur uh, side of things. Um, me and Josh, uh, mainly was actually on the show a few weeks ago. Um, we were working together, worked together before in the first lockdown. And got to a really good point and sort of, yeah, lockdown, we're cancelling the show, sort of affected that side of things. Mm. Um, but so no, we're just heading into another uh, off season for the competitive year next year. We've just done a show in September, um, done well in that. So looking just to improve on that really. Nice. So why did why did you start bodybuilding out of interest? I uh, started bodybuilding, bodybuilding probably when I was fifteen, sixteen. Um, that was just out of a gym just opened in the area. I went and tried it out. That was it for me. I uh, loved it. So then, who was you looking up to at that point? <laughs> it... Oh, everyone says Arnold, doesn't they? I was just about to say, I didn't want to just put it in your mouth. But, um, but no, obviously, I've, I've watched it on TV and that, that was yeah. it. I fell in love with it, and I think that was everyone's sort of stigma then. Yeah. Um, sort of get the weights at home, the magazines, thinking you're going to be yeah. like Ronnie Coleman the next day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, so I found the love for it then. Um, always wanted to compete, 
never got round to it due to my issues, sort of, um, with the drugs and alcohol side of things. That always put a stop to me. Um, so then it got to 2016, done my first show, um, done it blind, didn't really know what it was about, what it actually took as an athlete mm. to be that serious and do it. Um, so, so that's then, good, right? Because you're just throwing yourself in. Yeah, of course. So I threw myself in. I went into, I think, a fitness model category, probably weighing 20, 30 kg heavier than the rest of them. Yeah, is that short, uh, shorts? Yeah. So can we take the piss out of that? Yeah, you can take the piss out of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anyone that's wearing shorts that looks incredible, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, literally. Um, but then working with Josh, I knew that was then, then when it was going to be sort of games on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he got me there, so... Yeah, good. Obviously, having a coach behind you as well, especially someone as big as Josh and as, <laughs> and as you know, as skilled as him, it, it's always going to help you, isn't it? So it is. But I see Josh more than a coach. He's a lifestyle mentor as well. Yeah, I don't just go to him with my my plan. Most coach, there's your plans. Go and do it. Come back to me. I I speak to Josh about everything and anything. If I'm yeah. struggling with something, I speak to him. And for what I like about Josh is he don't care about the money side of things. He cares about you as a person. Yeah. Most coaches be like, that's not my, not my issue. It's not my yeah. forte. Go and Josh see. actually undercharges, and he won't mind me saying. Hundred percent he does. I said it to him before. Hundred percent he does. But, but that that's... just proves, doesn't it? It, it, it? It's for the passion. Yeah, of course. Because any, I see a lot of coaches now. Not mean to sound bad, but they get their sort of pro status. They get their sort of credibility and pop, popularity come from it, and they just whack their prices up. Yeah. Where does, really does quite their experience like that, hasn't it? developed developed with yeah. that. I mean, you know, they've got a pro overnight and they're putting £60 a month on overnight. So yeah. that's why Josh hasn't changed. You won the Arnold's, nothing changed. Yeah. And that's a big thing. Yeah. Massive thing. So, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, no, good. So let's take Brad back some years yeah. growing up. Um, but what, what, what was, I don't know, what, what was life like for you as a, let's just say 15, 16 year old, somewhere around there? Like, good. You know, I mean, good. I mean, like, for that sound a dick, I was in private education all my life since since I was born. Nice. And I had the best upbringing, best parents, most loving parents, uh, done everything for me. And, yeah, all of my fuck-ups were on my own, off my own back. Nothing, I, I mean, a lot of people I have aren't that sort of lucky to have the best upbringing. And it does steer mm. a lot towards what happens later in life. Um, but I find... Even people with the best upbringing can have issues. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't define who you are. Yeah. Um, but throwing a curveball in there, do you yeah. think? Do you think sometimes a a way of being brought up that's too I'm trying to think how to word this, but like comfortable, too, rebellious. yeah, too yeah, too <laughs> comfortable. Yeah. Do you think that then turns you? Because let 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 I'm going to put it straight like this, right? Yeah. I grew up in a pretty shit rough area, right? I did pretty shit rough things because my surroundings were bad. Yeah. Right? Now, why does a person, not necessarily you, but just people, because it's something to explore, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why does someone in such a, a comfortable position, you know, yep. like you, very good education, amazing parents, why does that person steer? I reckon it's two, two one, th one or two things, is they either rebel against it because they're so comfortable. Yeah. I mean, if you try and keep a child away from it for so long, Eventually, they're going to. So saying, don't touch the paint. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to rebel. Or I always touch paint. It's who they mix. <laughs> or it's who they mix in with. Yeah. Um, what so, was you? Do you think? Bit of both. Bit of both. I always had that sort of let's say naughty shriek in me. Yeah. Through school. And, that, and that's just let's just say it neurologically. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's a neurological thing that you have. Yeah, of course it is. It's, I just you're, you're either got it or you don't. Yeah. Because let's let, let's be honest. If you smack your child, yeah, your child's going to smack someone. Yeah. Because it's that's what they see as that's the way you deal with something. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you're not be, if 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 you don't smack your child, they're not going to know to do that. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're if you if you had that streak inside you, not smacking children. Yeah. But do you know what I'm saying? That, but you had that you had that sort of like streak in you that just took you that wrong direction. That if you weren't taught it. Yeah. Then it must be within you, right? Like neurological. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I mean, like, I'm me as a parent. I would never touch my kids, but I'm a strict parent hands down through and through I'm strict mm. my dad was strict to me not overly strict but he was strict but mm. that's how he's been brought up and so so my mum wasn't and my mum isn't <laughs> yeah so but that's how I'm like I'm liking it now with my kids because I don't know any different yeah. if you know what I mean I've seen different but 
I've also seen what works with me. My dad being strict with me has helped me a lot. Yeah. Whereas I'm thankful for that now. And I'll hope one day my kids grow up and be thankful the same back. Yeah. But mums are there. How many kids you got? I've got four girls now. Four girls? Yeah. Wow. I'm skint. <laughs> skint and you need to you need to be like following them everywhere they go. Yeah, that's it. But they can all share a wedding. Uh, yeah, fair one, yeah. You're all marrying the same bloke. <coughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, Zach's going to kill me if I don't do this, so I've just forgot the present again. Yep. Or gift, should we call it. So we have a ritual for the show where you, where you bring a gift along. Um, I've checked outside. There's still not a Bugatti. Everyone, <laughs> everyone has heard me say this before. They're not, <laughs> they're they're not, the fucking they're not clicking on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's something that represents you and that we can stick on the wall. Hopefully we can stick on the wall. Yeah. So. Cool. Oh. Yeah, it's gone for his car key. I bought this, mate, because I saw you iron it up as well. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I actually didn't remember that. Though. I remember, I seen it. remember on Instagram. You do like, you know what? <laughs> it's funny because it, 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 it's actually badass as well, isn't it? It is. And do you know what's really funny? I've not got a dog. No, 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 boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I need, do you know, I, I keep saying Sarah at the minute we need a dog and I keep saying it. And I'm like, that when I seen that, I was like, I want a dog even more. You've got to go buy like... a big dog now. <laughs> <laughs> so I did ask Josh like... about it, but it's chihuahua. Yeah, it didn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Just like double round. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I appreciate that, man. For anyone that can't see it's a well it's a a gasp belt but you know what i might stick it on leo it might fit in no <laughs> <laughs> no appreciate it man thanks a lot it, w- it will go on the wall for a bit until i get a dog yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> no, appreciate it man so so yeah so w- you you were growing up quite um what's the word we used earlier on because it was a good way of looking at it. like comfortable yeah yeah you grew up quite comfortable yep um, and when did you sort of, let's say, steer the other way? The wrong I mean, direction? I'll say around 17. It's when I first ever tried cocaine. Um, at the time, <clears throat> I'd done it and I was like, I don't see what the big hype's about. Mm. Didn't, didn't really think anything of it. Maybe I'll 10 years later. <laughs> but mm. uh, yeah, and then ever since then, when I went out, I'd done it with that certain person at the time. Um, I think so. Before that, I sort of rebelled against certain other things, like doing the childish shit of like shoplifting sweets out of the shops and mm. whatnot, sneaking into places at night and just doing whatever you could do to. I mean, I grew up in a different sort of environment where mum and dad owned a hotel in Skegness, so there was not a lot to do in the fact of. I was, yeah. They had to be there all the time. I'm yeah, exactly. Of, so, so is that where you grew up in Skegness? No. So I was born in, I was born in Maidenhead. So yeah. we then moved to Bristol when I was young, um, and then was there for eight, eight, nine years, and then we moved to Skegness where they bought a hotel. With my grandparents. So how old were you when Skegness kicked in? Nine. Yeah. Nine, and then. So um, you're at that age that really the rest of that was. Yeah. Child. Life yeah. wasn't it, yeah. Child life, normal child life, and then um yeah, from there I think it was at seventeen, went back to Maidenhead. So just Your choice or family? Uh family, uh work from my dad's side. Uh followed the work, that's what he's always done. Mm. Um so we made that choice to move back. And I just met someone at the time and then we just had I literally my first child, my daughter, first daughter then. At the age of how old are you? I was sixteen when she got pregnant or seventeen when she was born. No. Um, and then she moved to Maidenhead with us um so how, how did you feel having a child at that age i was still a kid myself i, I couldn't look after myself it's crazy isn't it yeah it was i mean I, at the time i was the sort of you watch all the films and now i was happy and then the mum and dad weren't so happy and you're like why are you not happy but then i realized why because they could see me sort of fucking around sort of steering my life up and just bring another one into it yeah and um i could see now but yeah. I wouldn't change it for the world now. No, no they wouldn't either. And that, that um, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, it's crazy to think that because we have children. Yeah. And let's just go, your child's now pregnant at the age of 16. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to think anything other than just, fuck, I wish it wasn't now. I'd, yeah. hit, I'd hit the fan. He, he wasn't pregnant, by the way. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> no, but I'd, I'd hit the fan. And not yeah. so fact of, it's an amazing feeling. It's going to live your life a little bit first. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Do you think when you had a be- your first baby then, what's your first girl called? Uh, Lily. Lily. Yeah, so she's when you 12 f- now. It's crazy, isn't it, to it think is. that, yeah. 
So when you first had Lily, we just, yeah, we, how did you feel? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Because obviously, yeah. being that young, having a child, yeah. what did that feel I like? Was, I was, like I said, you, you sort of have to stop your fun and grow up as a dad. I didn't. I continued having my fun. And yeah. I weren't a responsible dad at the time. I weren't, I weren't there as I should have been. I was there, but I weren't there. And neither, we were both young parents, mm. both still growing up. So I think that's more so where the grandparents sort of stepped in a lot. And my mum formed a very, very close bond with Lily. Which is a very good, fortunate thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. because if I didn't have them, then fuck, yeah. No, you yeah. don't know, I don't want to think about it. No, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd still have it today. No, I, I really yeah. don't. So, yeah. But I'm thankful for that, because, yeah, and then over that, my mum grew a very strong bond with Lily. More and more over the years, and I think now where Lily's growing up and becoming a teenager, mm. she sort of, Lily doesn't have that sort of bond with anybody because she's a teenager doing what she wants to do and it's hurtful <laughs> even with your mum you mean yeah so, right yeah, she, yeah. Don't, she don't want to see her as much she but wants to you, go out with her friends but and... she's growing up exactly she? like we have to see the, we understand my, my, my little girl's only seven but still she's there's certain little things she does where I'm like yeah you know, she'll call me dad for example I'm like yeah my five year old daddy dad yeah <laughs> do you know what I mean the thing yeah. is it sounds so someone that hasn't got a child probably doesn't understand that but it's like I'm your daddy yeah yeah. yeah, and I'll always be daddy. Like, <laughs> you know, call me dad, especially to your mum. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, call me daddy. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, and, and I think um, it, you looking back at that, we all know, we all know the feeling and the thoughts of it. Yeah, but at the same time, you have to enjoy it, don't you? Because fuck me, yeah, like, of course. Like you just brought a little baby onto the yeah. wor- into the world, and it's that feeling. Is just the best thing. It in the is. World. And I think this time we've just had another baby, uh, me and my partner now. Uh, she's seven months old nearly. Oh, great. I think this was my sort of time again. Yeah. Nothing will ever replace anything. No one will ever so replace how, anything. So, what's your split between the four of those? So you've got so, a 12 year old? So, I've got a 12 year old, a five year old, a four year old, and an eight month year old. Now, the five and the four year old, Vienna and Polly, came into my life a lot later on. Yeah. Um, with my partner now, Paige. Um, so I met Paige two and a half years ago. Yeah, they came into my life. Um, they were they were really young, and unfortunately, Paige went through a ship position with her ex, with abuse and whatnot, and the kids. Um, but oh, thankfully enough, uh, they can't really remember it. Uh, yeah. I think it was ever since four months on, they started calling me dad, and I never changed it. And ever since that day, they they don't know any different now. Yeah, they don't know any different. Um, so, which is nice, though. Yeah. So, I went from one girl to four girls very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have anything to do with your Mrs. X, the, the dad of the... No, he's, no. Ne- he's never going to see the kids again. Cool. No, that no, was set by yeah, law and yeah. whatnot. And, uh, yeah, if it ever did come to that, uh, it, it wouldn't happen anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, they're, my, they're my girls. Yeah. Always yeah. will be. How, how do you feel with that, being a dad? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Knowing that somebody else, do you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, yeah. don't be wrong. He's he's clearly done wrong to be in the position he's in. Yeah. But how does that make you? Because I always think about that. Do you know what I mean? Because because I've got two children with two different mums. Yeah. So Nelly was with my ex. I was with for eight years, and then me and Sarah now come up to the same time. Yeah. So I think it's time to change now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, like we. You know this anyway, and I think most blokes would say this. Like, you never planned to do that and then leave, and you know things just didn't work. No, with of course, me and Sasha, and it was. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. like, but then to know that you're you've now took over this this yeah. this family as such. What I think I think say say if he was still in their life, still support dad and all the rest of it, I would have that respect and space. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If they ever tried to call me dad, no, no you, you've got your dad. Because he's yeah, in the life, yeah? Of course. Of course yeah. And I wouldn't discipline them the way I do now and bring them up the way I do because it'd be different. Yeah. But it's not. And he, he wasn't there when he was there and he isn't there now. He's never tried to make it. He's not bothered. Yeah. Now, I get we all do wrongs in our life. I get, I've been there. I've done it with my first. And But you, you if, if they mean that much, you've got to grow up and you've mm. got to change it. Yeah. And... I would, feel, I would feel bad on this point that I feel like I've been in your shoes. Yeah. Because I have. Yeah. But then it's to the point where, I've, to me now, they're my girls. Yeah. And I put the effort in. And I've yeah, them you've up, done the work. And I've made it yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nothing's, nothing's going to take that away. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. 
And unfortunately, where I've been myself in his shoes, I'd have to fucking bite the bullet as well. Yeah. And, and, and as well, it comes to a point, doesn't it, where, you know, regardless of what people are going through yep. and, and, and what's been thrown at them, what position they're in, whether they're broke or not, whether, you know what I mean? Drugs or not, alcohol or not. Yeah. It comes down to that child needs a dad. Yeah. Hundred percent. I I agree with you. Like it's just nice to explore those things, isn't it? Because I was once in a, in a in a situation where somebody was, you know, uh, I won't say acting dad for Nelly because they weren't acting dad, but it was going that direction. And yeah. and it always makes you think, doesn't it? Like, you know, how far can you go where it doesn't become your daughter? Or, yeah. Do you, know, do you know, I mean, I mean, it wasn't an option because I've never not seen Nelly. So, yeah. But still, you have those thoughts and fears, don't you? Of thinking, of course, like, of course, you know, you if somebody else is, is is living with your children. Yeah. See, I've I've got it now. I mean, Lily, she's got a stepdad. He's yeah. Been, I think, for the five six years, and she's always rebelled against it. Yeah. And and do you know, I, I I'm thankful there's a guy there supporting her. Of course. Bringing her up. And you, you have support res- in the mum of her. You, well, yeah. you have respect for him. Yeah. If he tells you to do something, uh, in that household, he is your dad. In that yeah. household. Yeah. But your dad's always here. You have a need yeah. me, I'm here. Yeah. But you've got to respect that guy that's housing you, clothing you, apart from what I do, is, uh, and that's it. Yeah. And it, it, I respect that. I'm not one to be like, don't tell my daughter what to do. No, of course. As in, you fucking that's friction, him. isn't it? It's, of course it's, it, it yeah. makes life harder than it needs to be. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, that's good of you th- to think like that, because... I, I like I say I was nearly in that situation and I was like thinking this that and yeah. the other but I think you have to remind yourself don't you that you just need to protect that body yeah of course you do you know whether it's here or there or whatever they decide to do you just need to yeah. look after them and love them and I'm sure people are thinking with me and my girls now if they knew how long them little girls have been in my life not long I mean, on the grand scheme of things and they was like oh you discipline them like that well, I do because they need a they need a dad figure in their life and they mm. don't know I'm not yeah of course well, the others but are I being am. taught that yeah. way right yeah of course of course, but um, like I say, they, they, they don't know any different. Yeah. So I'm not going to act any different. Yeah. And that'd be it. And it, it pains me to the other day, the other, find out. But, but you can jump that hurdle when you get there. Exactly. It's, it's something that is inevitable. It probably will happen. Of course, it will. I mean, I think at school the other day, she got called by a real surname on a medical form. Right. And uh, she's like. No, it's not. Yeah, it's like, it is. She's like, no, it's not. <laughs> she yeah. came home ranting and raving to me, and uh, we spoke to her school and uh, sorted it in the end. But yeah. she went happy. <laughs> yeah, I guess you've got to protect those things, haven't you? Until the day where, of course, you, you know, she's a bit older and you can. You can only protect her so long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've said this quite a few times on this podcast, actually. But something that's always stuck me. What my uh, old therapist said to me is, with your children, um, don't try and protect them, but guide them. It's a very powerful thing, actually, when you think about it. It is. I just you can't to protect it. them. No. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're standing in a street and a thousand men, not that this would happen, but yeah. a thousand men could try and take them and you would still yeah. win because of that, that sheer power and yeah. overwhelm of what your ability is. But when it comes to protecting them when you're not with them, you can only guide them, can't you? Yeah, of course you can. You, you can only give them advice. And it was the same with me. Mum and dad can only do the same with me. Yeah. And, um, but you're going to do what you're going to do. Yeah. And I'm very much like that with them now. I mean, Paige, she's very like stressed. So they're going to hurt themselves. Like, Let them hurt themselves because yeah. it's going to happen. You're never going to stop it. No. And they're no. going to learn from it. And it's, uh, it, uh, you know, it sounds, Can't bubble wrap it. It sounds, no, you're right. And it sounds crazy to say, but it's actually character building. Yeah, of course it is. You know, even. It's what we call bullying. <laughs> no, exactly, yeah, exactly. It's just a different way of looking at it. But it's like, <coughs> it, yeah, it goes, it goes from the littlest thing, doesn't it? So banging your head on the table. Yeah. I'm not going to stop you banging your head every time because, nah. you know, my mum, bless her, used to do that with my kids and I'm like, mum, don't do that. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, but I don't want to hurt the head. I'm like... I've told you to stop five yeah. times if you're going to carry on doing it. Do you know it, what I mean? It. It's like, <laughs> then they will learn the hard way. Like, yeah. that's life. And do you know what? As a parent, I think it's one of the biggest... I'm so passionate about thinking like this because I didn't have it... You know, I didn't have a, a dad, uh, you know, when I was young. Yeah. And it was like, for me to think like this, it, it's something that I want to be because I didn't have it. Yeah. You know, and I want to make sure that my children literally grow up the way that I wish I grew up. Yeah, if you want I get to put, that. If you want to put it like that. I think a lot of people go the other way as well. If they're brought up strict, they're like, I don't want to be strict with my kids. No, of course. Nice, yeah. But there's a place for it. Of course. There's definitely is a place for it. Yeah, it yeah. is. No, it is. It is. And you have to balance it. When, yeah. when there's only one parent, I get like the mum. It's very hard because you want the easy life. And um, 
that's unfortunately when I'm a page, that's what happened with her. She wanted the easy lives of the kids, whatever they want they got, and mm. it doesn't it doesn't go well when they get older because they expect everything. Mm. No, and no. When agree. they do get told no, you're gonna know about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, mate, I I literally so my mum used to give me everything when I was young. Yeah. And 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 uh, you can't really see it because I've got a thing, but I've got a scar that goes all the way up here. Yeah. Yeah. Where I don't know how old I was. It's whenever trampolines were were a thing, right? <laughs> but I punched a window. Because my mum wouldn't buy me a trampoline. Yeah. And then she, because I punched the window, went in the hospital, had to have an operation, got back, I had a trampoline. Well, she got it. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it like, fucking worked. Do you know what I'm saying? And, well, and, not in the hospital, got a trampoline. It's like, <laughs> fucking I'll do that again then. But, you, you know, and that, that, that was because my mum tried to give me everything. Yeah. She thought she was doing the right thing, and I obviously I love her for it. But that's not the way. That's not the way you teach, is it? And it's that's not, something that. But I now put myself in her shoes. I mean, I, she leaves me for a day with the kids, mate. I'm, I'm losing my head. Everything. I'm losing my head. I'm super going to the wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how she does it. I yeah. don't know how she does it. I don't know what she's got in her. But yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, it's, it is my hundred percent. You, we can talk about kids all day. Like it's one of yeah. the things, isn't it? That literally, it's it's an ever going thing. But so. Let's let's talk about sort of like briefly about your school life and stuff. Yep. Were were you good in school? Did you enjoy school? What sort of things? So I did enjoy it. I would I wouldn't I would never like skip school. I'd never like just No, I would I enjoyed being there. But I think it was a fact I enjoyed making people laugh. Yeah. I I was never the quiet one. I was never yeah. the quiet one. And if there was trouble I'd be in the middle of it somewhere. But I did like to get my head, I was weird. I went through stages. I'd like to get my head down. I'd like to sort of, I think I'd like to pretend that I'm I'm doing good. Yeah, is that for the what people see of you? Yeah, but I, I did enjoy it. Some things I enjoyed learning, some things I didn't get. And um, not everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. But no matter what, I think I think I could have done a lot better if I actually stuck to it. I've got the, I'm, not, I'm an intelligent person, but I fucking wasted it completely. Yeah. But... Would it have changed me now in life? Probably not. Like, I, I see, I say it time and time again, I look at all these people, I'm like, where ever do they ask for your GCSEs now? Mm. Where do they ever ask for your qualifications? The army was the only time when I ever went into that that I had to show them my certificates of GCSE. Yeah. The only time. And I just, I don't see, yeah, when, when do you ever use maths? It's funny, isn't it? Because you, <laughs> you wouldn't think in the army they would have asked you that. No, I know. I know. <laughs> all the places. But then, I mean, obviously, you, I'm sure you didn't do this, but, you know, you typically think you're going to go in the army to shoot people. Let's yeah. be honest. It's, it's, the word, it's the word they look for in the careers office and they go, no, you're not joining. Yeah. Because that's not what the army is I don't think you're meant about. to be stable. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you've joined the wrong force. Can we shoot someone yet? <laughs> but um, I went in there and like, you actually your algebra test. I was like, fuck. I was like, mate, oh, sorry, I needed yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, luckily I passed all that. And um, But yeah, just from school. So I enjoyed going, done my exams. I got enough what I needed to do to go to college. Went to college, done personal training. And then realised that, yeah, I probably didn't want to work in a the gym there and then. Mm. Like, like, I loved being it, but I didn't want to work in a gym. Um, so I sort of carried a qualification around that I weren't really going to use. I mean, I've never actually done personal training. Mm. Probably a bit here and there. Um, but it must have served your brain, hasn't it? Of course you, it you've has. Taught, you've, you've learned things from Fucking it. Oh, there's so much shit in my brain that I know about it. I can read it off all day long. Mm. But I've used that more for myself and close people around me to help them. Mm. as much as they don't want to listen <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah it serves its purpose And but I don't think if I ever done different in school I'd be in a different place mm. so that's it I've sort of career jumped quite a bit I've enjoyed every part stage of my career what I've done but I've earned a lot of shit load of money you know, I've, and I've been times where I've just absolutely begging out my ass. Mm. but yeah I certainly don't think you need good qualifications to get a good job no, I, I think agree. it's all about how you carry yourself as a person. Yeah, it's a, it's a really tough one because obviously I coach and mentor a lot of people and, you know, quite a lot of them are younger than me. Yeah. And, you know, not necessarily younger to the point where they're going through their GCSEs and, and, and uh, necessarily, um, you know, uh, going through college and all that sort of stuff. However, you do try and tell people that that doesn't matter. Yeah. But then it's also not right by the curriculum because yeah. do you know what I mean because at that age they need to be doing something yeah, you don't want to go to their mum and dad and be like we told your kid that's yeah do you know that, it's, it's, it's a tough one isn't it but actually the bottom line is I mean we speak about this a lot don't we like with the 
youths and stuff like and it's, it's one of those things like where the bottom line is you need to have general life um experiences yeah. you know over qualifications yeah of course you do yeah 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 it is a because you release it's, someone from school into the real world it's a lot different of course that's a lot different course. but that's but that's a little bit like you know your child doing his homework but also yeah. letting him bang his head on the table yeah exactly you know i mean <laughs> that you need that but yeah figure that one out as well yourself you know and, and, and it's getting that yeah it's getting that balance between the you know each side of it it is and I think that's what makes school enjoyable for a lot is when you say about the homework they spend eight nine hours a day at school got kind of sit for another two hours doing homework and I don't get it mate but, sometimes I uh, struggle I struggle with Nelly's homework yeah I know he's like dad can you spell this no no, no. Google <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, the school was good. There was nothing massive that really took out of me in school. Um, I was just that average person that I to make everyone laugh and fucked around. Be, be the clown. That's it. Did you know you're the most productive when you fiddle or something? Yeah, I've been told that. <laughs> that's why, honestly, that's why in class I was always swearing my dick. <laughs> Cut <it> out. Mm. <laughs> Keep that in. <laughs> so... Yeah, so 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 obviously, look at your storyline then. After college, realizing you didn't want to do personal training. Yep. Um, for anyone watching the video now, he's just completely stripped. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> looks like a completely different. Good time. Looks That's like a completely different today. person. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so so yeah, so, so you come out of college. Oh, yeah. Um, what you realize you didn't want to do that job as such yeah is that, so is that what you think? I sort of bounced around things from like driving jobs factory jobs uh, didn't really know where I wanted to be what I wanted to do I was too busy sort of at that time leaving college finding my feet with sort of drinks and dabbling in drugs at that point yeah is that um, where the drugs and drink came into it a bit heavier a bit, a bit into my life yeah around 17, 18 um because what happened was we then, my partner at the time, my daughter's mum, we, she moved to Maidenhead and we lived, we got our first flat when I was 17, 18. Mm. So I moved out and we had our own place. We then split up and she moved back to Skegness with her family. Right. I stayed there and when I stayed at that flat on my own, that was probably when it went, went bad. Um, so yeah. Uh, Did you think that was like, a sad period of life or was it boredom or not at the time lost I don't know feel a bit lost but at the time I didn't really know what love was sort of thing I was still very yeah. young I was still sort of just enjoying my life outside of relationships sort of thing uh, so I was having fun and uh, there was no sort of let's be honest you were being a 17 year old lad yeah and that, that's the, that's the part isn't it that if we could advise people, if they want to listen to advice, yeah, it's you know that's not to say I'm not saying anyone that has a child that young is fucked up. That's not no. what, but but you know there is a period of fucking old testosterone is going through the roof here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So so yeah, I'm sure you're going to live your life and make the mistakes you're going to make. Yeah, it, it and that must be that must be tough for you because your body your body and your you know your system's trying to do this. Yeah, whereas you're trying to then fight it and trying to be. The person, yeah, you of course want it to is, be. and it's like, like you said, the testosterone. I was like, I wasn't really loyal in that relationship at all. I wasn't, and uh, I just I'd done really basically what I wanted when I wanted, mm. and you learn from it because not only is it, it just it fucks up a child in, in the process at, at the time it was a baby, but then going up in life, it, it not that it could have been different, but they're just wondering why, why didn't you and dad stay together, and yeah, you don't really want to tell them so it's just one yeah. of those things but that's when I sort of yeah drugs started coming into play started going to the pub all the time started drinking all the time silly hours staying up for two three days at a time because there was no one sort of around me to please yeah 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 and I sort of have friends over and just, just do it day in day in day out and then we got back together and I moved back up to Gignes and that was a very 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 bad time as well around 19 20 years old is when i was going through drugs like mad absolute mad i mean it, it got bad like i was up five six days at a time and we, we both used to do it at that point so it it, it was just a never-ending cycle um but it got bad. I mean, like there was, you know, when you do it yourself, it's like you only come into something and then 
you start getting like on a session with cocaine and then you start getting sleep deprivation and that's a drug in itself. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. you're seeing things that ain't there, hearing things that ain't there, yeah. it's fucking your head. Not good for your mood, is it? No, but I was the most confident, outgoing person. I had no worries. I was never paranoid, nothing. And that that, that changed everything, everything. Um, but then it was more of an addiction. Um, I mean, I can remember those times I sold cars for it. I sold a car for two ounces of cocaine in the process to think I'm going to make a lot of fucking money here and sell it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I sold one bit of it. Really, not one bit of it. I, I've done it all, and oh. two weeks of having the best time of my life, and it was just once it's gone, it's like what now? And then you do it all again. And what I, what I can't fathom still to this day is how I had the money to mm. do it day. In. I don't have the money now to do it day in day out. No, no, no. no like no, working yeah. full time. It's like where did I get all this money from? Yeah, I I, I, I don't know. But it's that des it's desperate money, isn't it? Like, it is because you'd find people that are doing it session to session, session to session, and but it's a bit like yeah. now. It's a bit like now that if you were, if you were, you know, in a shit situation with money, and your kids needed food, yeah. you would find money. Yeah, yeah. And it's exactly the same as that. But you were feeding something it. different, weren't you? That's it. But I could never find the money to pay my bills. But I'd find the money for drugs. Yeah. But then that money could have been for the bills. But of course, I'd, I'd spend it on other things. Um, but yeah, that was a period that was, that was very bad. And that mentally fucks me like, really bad. Um, it caused me to have serious paranoia. I can remember there was a point it got so bad that my mum and dad had to come pick me up, do an eight hour round trip, come pick me up and take me home, get me away from it. And I remember just sitting in my front room. I thought my mum and dad were talking about me in the kitchen, whispering about me behind my back all the time. And I'm like, what the, why are they talking about me? And it's the fact they, they weren't. They were probably talking about my fucking dinner. And I'm just, I, I just couldn't get out of that mess. Um, so, so they knew you were deep in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They've not so I've never lied you, about it. Did you come clean with them, or did you? Did you have to tell them, or did they find out? What, I can't remember. I can't remember actually how they first ever found out. Um, I probably would have told them somehow. I don't think they would have found out. Um, I guess they couldn't have found out, could they? Because you were far, no. far away. I've always been more more than open with them all through my drug addiction, and they've they've never left my side. <laughs> so. They've always stuck by me. There's been points where I thought I was going to lose them, and there's been threats of it. But I think at the mum and dad, they are. They've always stuck by me. No, fair play to them, though, man. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could do it, what they've been through. Because without me actually saying too much of this story, because I don't really want to share this, but like, we've got a situation that where you have to tell somebody so often that you're yeah. going to leave them, yeah. but you're not. No. But you're trying to do that to try and make them fix up. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it in relationships. So, but I, 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 you look at it from a relationship point of view as well. I wouldn't put half the shit that people have gone through with me. Mm. I wouldn't. And it's like, my mum and dad as well, they've given me fucking thousands of pounds for paid drug debts. And yeah. I, But the thing is with my mum and dad, I've always had that respect. Whereas I may not have shown them respect through what I've done, but I could have took that thousand pound off my dad and gone and bought a shitload of more drugs. But I genuinely always took it to pay my debt. Because mm. you knew they were just getting you out of the shit. Yeah. yeah, and showing that respect probably shouldn't have racked up the debt again, but I did because I just paid it. But that, as well, without sticking up for you, is part of the problem, yeah? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Maybe I needed some bad shit to happen to me. Yeah. And it never did. It never did. I mean, I look at it both ways. I mean, someone owes you 50 quid for a bit of cocaine and they keep asking for more. Why would you give them more when they can't afford that? That's yeah. where I don't get where yeah. debts rack up and rack up. But as well, the people in that, yeah, in that world, yeah. they have that power, don't they? Yeah, because they know power. you're they know you're coming back, and you know whether they whether they have or haven't, they think they've got a crew behind them that are gonna yeah. come and rinse you if you don't pay. Yeah. You, 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 you but bets. I've had people threaten me and threaten to come and get the money, and if I had it, I'd be buying more drugs off you. So, yeah. like, I ain't got it, and you doing anything ain't gonna change it. Yeah. So. But that's, and I look from the relationship side of you, uh, point of things. I mean, I've done it all through my my last marriage, should we say. Um, and I, when I met Paige uh, two and a half years ago, I was at, I was at probably with the lowest point. Mm. Lowest point. Uh, just spending hundreds of hundreds of pounds a week on it. And she, she met me like it. Did, uh, she, did she know that at the time, or was it? Yeah. Was you, right. yeah she knew. And um, it was a bit of pass a parcel because let's say me and Paige at some points enjoyed life together and but then somebody grows up and you don't 
mm. and you carry on. And I remember her saying to me, you ever carry on like this? She went, I'll be it between me and you. Mm. And like, she had kids involved at the time. I didn't really know. Mm. Um, and that was it. I, was, I put a stop to it. And then it got bad again. I mean, I think being with Paige, I've gone through some proper lows in my life with drugs. Well, I haven't managed it well at all. Mm. That's all. And you got, I went missing. I remember going missing for two, three days at a time. I turned my phone off. And I think that's the scariest thing when you go missing, your phone vibrates. It's like, fucking hell, I don't want to be speaking to anyone. But you put yourself in their shoes. And for all she knows, I could have been in another woman's bed for three days. Mm. Or dead. Exactly, or dead. I wasn't. I'm sat in some cunt's kitchen, <laughs> loving life. Mm. And that's like, women were never on my brain at that point. All I wanted to do was be with the lads and get, get on it. Mm. but you just don't think of the mental would I put up with that no I wouldn't no way would I put up with it and you think why shouldn't you because you've done it mm. but then it takes a strong fucking woman to put up with it and see you come out the other side and I think probably that's what she saw in me was me coming out the other side of it mm. it is because like you have these people that don't give a shit and I've always no matter what wrongs I've made I've always had my characteristics I've always been polite I've always been generous I've always had a heart on my sleeve and I've always been respectful like I've always had them in me whether I've been on drugs or I haven't mm. I think that's sort of carried me through a lot of shit because but that as well is you know hats off to your parents isn't it like let's be honest yeah. they brought you up that way yeah and they have. You, you've kept that about you as such yeah it's just that you had this addictive personality I have and I've still got it like, I have to be addicted to something and that's where I noticed when I was bad in my last relationship, I think it just ended actually, that I got with Josh in lockdown. And he made that change for me. I think lockdown helped, I couldn't go out anywhere, I couldn't mm. drink. And I drink's a massive trigger for me, for drugs. Of course it is. It, 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 was, the same, it was the same for me when I used to take I do not think about drugs. cocaine unless I've had a drink. Yeah. But it's same as people, do you smoke? I used to. So I've never smoked in my life before. Yeah. I smoked weed twice and literally went off my rock. That's not my thing. It's not for, it's <laughs> not for me. The thing is, I've got ADHD and if you smoke, Weed, weed yeah, for, see, for I've people been, with ADHD makes you go up. I've been told this. Apparently, I've got it. And if you drink caffeine, I go tired. It tight. can make you go I down. Have an yeah. Adverse effect. yeah. So well, all, all the things you're saying sound pretty like ADHD focused. Yeah, I'm spontaneous. So I'll but, but you know, you know something. You know something that I and you know it's only been the last whatever year, year and a half for me. Cause I, I, I'm 35, right? And I've only just been diagnosed with ADHD. I don't really care that I've got it, but the reason I went through the diagnosis was because. I was realizing that a lot of things were being affected yeah. because of things that could potentially be the reason, you know what I mean? Why yeah, I had ADHD. Yeah. And, and that's for me why I went through that, just literally to understand it and have a, put it at rest, I guess, and have a reason behind things that you do and say and, it and, is, and everything else. It's much more than what people class it as. To me, when I was growing up, ADHD mm. meaning your kid was a dickhead. Of course. And had behavioral it's, issues. It's and that was it. Yeah, yeah. That was all. And I feel like, now there's such a stigma on putting a name on something that everyone plays on, on plays onto it. Mm. Like fucking years and years ago, there was none of it. There was no depression. There was no, well, there was, but no one just there wasn't a, a name for it. No one knew about it. Yeah. And now there's a name for fucking everything. Yeah. There's, I mean, e there's even made up names. There is, and I, mean, <laughs> I won't say one of them. It hurt but it's like I call you call up doctors now, and they diagnose you over the phone without yeah. even seeing you. Yeah. And it's like, how can you do that? Yeah. How can you do that? Yeah, I mean, I've been, been prescribed tablets over the phone. How? What, why you spoke to me for well, ten I, minutes? Well, I got, I got di when I first left the army, went through like you know, shit time, and I got diagnosed with an issue with bipolar. Yeah, um, it's called cyclophemia, which is like yeah. borderline bipolar. It's the non-medicated version. And you know what? It made complete sense, and I was like, that is exactly me. Yeah. But then now, fast forward to learning about ADHD, it never was bipolar. Yeah. You know, but that's why I said about you with your with your um, addictive personality because I've worked with a, 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 an ADHD coach, you know, not not too long ago, and we st still speak to her now. And she was on the podcast the other week, uh, yeah. Nikki Drew. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that one, um, if you've not watched it already, watch it. Her parrot is there watching you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is her parrot. But she she talks about like there's lots of li different theories and stuff, and um, she she was always on about like uh, for ADHD. So imagine a dog. Yeah. This, this dog that we've got here a dog needs to chew yeah yeah have you watched the podcast I don't want to say this if you I've know. seen a bit of hers right I'll tell you this anyway thing. just to make sense for it and the other people um, but 
you know, a dog has to chew. Yeah, you get a puppy, it wants to chew, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, choose your fucking best trainers and you can't smash it in the face because you've just yeah. you've just bought the dog and you don't want to you don't want to waste that money as well. I think it's fact it's illegal, mate. <laughs> 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 you just bought the dog. <laughs> but, you know, you feel like smashing it in the face because you've got like, 600 pound <laughs> pair of trainers, but you can't, so you go, oh, no worries, mate, don't do that again. Yeah. Right, but what you do, <laughs> on the serious side, is you give it something to chew, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to chew, it's going to chew all sorts of things. Yeah. So rather than going, don't chew, because that is impossible to do yeah. you go chew this yeah. so then it starts chewing this which is his own toy or her own toy whatever or whatever it wants to be um identified as in these day and age yeah um and and you know when when it has its own toy then it's going to chew that and that's that problem sorted yeah. you know with with you if you're saying that you have a, an addictive personality it's like when you asked about this podcast room like i yeah. decided it overnight and thought i did it the next day you, you uh, something i've learned massively is with addictive personalities you have to feed them yeah of course you do you know and you have, you have to replace to, something yeah right, you, with something that's not as harmful as the thing you've done before exactly and you know you, you are you are an addictive person so, yeah so why would you go stop being addictive yeah so i've done it like with drugs i was like oh i'm gonna stop drugs i'll just drink and then you, you feed the drink 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 and then it never ends well anyway but, you, but you're, end, you're gonna end up with drugs right yeah exactly in the, in the grand scheme of things yeah i mean i was a point i've done drugs and didn't even drink i've just done that just, just yeah. drugs, and that mm. wasn't a good thing either. And there was this whole thing where you didn't give, you didn't give a shit as a kid, or as say when you was younger, because I don't know. There's times you go driving round off your, off your, off your tits, and mm. you weren't drinking, but they could never test for it then. Yeah, you weren't. There was no paranoia. There was no depression. There was no. But now it's it's so different. I think a big thing is that cocaine ain't what it used to be. Yeah, I think it's mixed with so much shit now. And alcohol. Yeah. It, no, exactly. That's why I always say, you know, when I was in the army, I used to go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and get on parade for Monday. Yeah, yeah. And I used to feel fine because because yeah. alcohol, I, I, I swear by it, alcohol years ago was a bit cleaner, if you want to call it that. Yeah. You know, now it's so full of chemicals. I think that's why people have, get such bad hangovers. Yeah. But like you're saying, same with, same with drugs, right? They, they cut was. they cut them down so much. I mean, cocaine. You could do. I could do your daily tasks while doing it. Now. I, c I couldn't even function on it. Yeah. I'd have to sit down on that sofa on my own. I feel like the weight of the world's on my shoulders. I feel heavy. Yeah. Whereas that's not what that drug's about. No. And now, is that the drug that's changed or is it maybe my mental state that's changed that has yeah. caused me to be like that? I think it's a bit of both. I'd say it's a bit of both, yeah. Because now the paranoia's come from somewhere. You yeah. don't just get paranoid. It, it comes from things that have actually happened. So I remember people being like, oh, you think someone's going to knock at the door? I think that, because it's fucking happened. I've had people bang at the door yeah. that I don't want to be, parents, partners, whatever, while, so while doing it. Trauma triggers. So it? I think it's gonna, always going to happen when mm. I'm in that state. And, But yeah, I think it, it's mixed with so much shit now that it's more addictive than the drug itself. Yeah. And people are like, yeah, it's good, it's good, mate. Mm. I'd be fucking surprised if it's past 20, 30% now. Yeah. And yeah. So what are you actually fucking sniffing? Yeah. You don't know but you still go and do it because you think it is what it is and it ain't. Yeah. And you're paying fucking big money for it. Yeah. And it is big money. But as well, it's a little bit like, I'm going to try and put this into a scenario. I don't know, like, it, go into a sweet shop, yeah? I'm just yeah. trying to think of something simple. Go into a sweet shop when you're hungry. You're going to buy some sweets. Yeah. Of course you yeah, are. that's a simple way of putting it, but and but that's that that's something that we always have to remember, don't we? We're in control of that part. Yeah, we're probably not in control of if we go over that line. Yeah, because just you know you haven't built up the the discipline and you're not programmed that way. Yeah, do you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, I'm very aware about things like that. I will openly say if I have too much to drink, I'm a dickhead. Oh yeah, I am. If I don't do cocaine and that's where yeah I can't if I drink so much on its own I turn to a prick <laughs> so yeah. I, I think everyone's against me and they're not and but I think they're them things aren't they in life that we just learn yeah I and think we just stay, drink stay well. away from yeah exactly you know they're, they're the bits we can control and I think that's the important thing to know because you know there's too many people that will go through life saying <sighs> basically playing the victim card isn't it you yeah. know, thinking like, oh, you know, it's not, it's not fair because of this, that, and the other. Da, da, da. Well, actually, we we do choose where we go. Yeah, we do. And you know, I mean, this is what I mean with the younger generation that are all doing this, going out now, having fun with it, which they are probably having fun with it, taking it, and leaving it. It won't always be that way, and no. it'll get into the thing where they start doing it at home on their own, spending four hundred pound a weekend. And mm. I've been there. I remember doing four hundred pound every Saturday. 
Mm. And I was earning good money. And I was like, I'm skin. I was like, where the fuck's all my money going? And you, you add it up, and you're doing four hundred pound, five six hundred pound with fags and drink, and it's mm. like it's ridiculous. And then I think that's where bodybuilding sort of had to. That was always my mediation. Yeah, yeah. I so agree. when I go back to saying start with lockdown and Josh is once I started that, I don't touch drinks or drugs. I, I yeah. didn't nine months and didn't touch a thing. We got into a good way, a really good way. And then all the pubs back up, opened after lockdown. I went downhill again, lost it all. Mm. I think we put on, we went up to about 110 kg and lost it all again. Mm. And that's what I've done all my fucking life. I cycled it, is got big and got in good shape and then back to drugs and then done it all over again. Mm. But that just proves, doesn't it, when you focus on, let's just call them the right things. Yeah. You know, all the things that, that, that the direction you want to go, we'll, we'll call it. Yeah? yeah. When you focus on the direction you want to go, you then need to find the things that keep you locked onto that direction. You do, but I like you said with Dick's personality, I take it to the extreme. I can't just bodybuild. I can't yeah. just go to the gym and train and go home. I have to compete. No, no, of course. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. So, but that's still that same direction, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. And, it that, is. and that's what I think is important for us to understand, isn't it? Because you're going to get addicted to anything. It's, yeah. a, it's a little bit like, you know, a, another simple way of looking at it, phones. We fucking all do it sometimes where you're on it for far too long. Oh, yeah, we've just we've just literally had this, I had this discuss, discussion with Josh yesterday and me and my partner are, are, are victim to it. I mean, <laughs> she is especially, she's going to kill me for saying that. But I get home and you like you find yourself fucking just on your phones. Yeah. Right? And then you, it's like you go out with the kids for a lovely day out and you're just recording the kids doing what they're doing but you're yeah. not actually enjoying the fucking no, moment because you're actually yeah it's, it's a tough one that is isn't and it you, go you home, want to make memories don't you but yeah. you also but then you go home and watch the video over and over and it's like it's fucking yeah. oh yeah but it's nice for the family to see well it weren't always like that it weren't like yeah. that when I was a kid yeah so and I, I said to her I think this Christmas I said we should stay away from it and it's yeah. like because last year recording the kids open their presents it's like just enjoy the moment yeah no, because it, it, it goes super, it goes it far too quick yeah. Um, so you know something I think we've sort of like skipped a little bit army time for you yeah so when did you join the army What? how old were you I was 22 21 just turned 22 and where were you in your let's say addictive like, yeah I, I was using um, but how can I say I was never I was never an addict that if you took it away from me I'd be rocking in my room let's say yeah but I was someone that could never say no and but let's just let's just break this down sorry yeah. so 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 you you wasn't dependent on it no but you couldn't you didn't have the discipline to say no if no, up no it. way yeah. and if i had plans i would fuck them plans up for drugs yeah but if someone... so so sorry were you an addict then yeah 100 percent. i've done it every day because the way i look at it is addicts need it you didn't need it but you couldn't say no when it was there do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I can see we're, what you're trying to say. We're, we're splitting hairs here, but I'm just trying to look at it. In a, I feel in a, like an addict is someone that can't go without it. Can't come away or from cut, it. Or can't say no. Yeah. So if someone offers me a drink, I didn't think about that drink to, before they offered, and I don't need that drink, or there's a reason I can't have that drink, I would still say, yeah, I'll have it. But it's a little bit like, so I used to work on Tesco Security. Yeah. Yeah. Every so often, I mean, obviously, you know, I don't know if you've ever done security work, have you? No. No. But one of the fun things when you're in the back room, you're in a nice silent room, you're just trawling around the store <laughs> store on, on the cameras and stuff. <laughs> you know, I used to get a buzz off it because it's like I'm finding these people that are stealing. And then what you're doing <laughs> is you, you're looking. But the thing is, you're looking for all the... Uh, someone will find this offensive, but I'll just say it. So you're looking for all the scrotes. Yeah. Yeah? Because you're looking for the obvious people who are nicking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? But actually, I used to have a buzz out of looking for the ones who aren't obvious uh, yeah and then what you'll do is you'll 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 follow some you know nice 45 year old woman pretty woman you know got gu gucci bag <laughs> put on his fucking dunk dairy dunkers in her no, bag but you know what i'm saying <laughs> but, she'll, but she'll go down the makeup pile yeah right and she'll you know put the makeup there then put a bag on top of it right anyway the point of this story is she'll get to the counter she'll pay for all her food but makeup I never wore it but we know it's expensive yeah, yeah? Um, makeup's expensive. She forgot about that. So what she's called is an opportunity, opportunist, opportunist. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So she she didn't go. I'm going to Tesco's to steal. Do you know what I'm trying she to say? She went. I've saw an, I've saw an opportunity, so I'm going to go and do it. Yeah. And that's what I always think about when you think about addicts as well, because I get it. I'm you know 
it is what you think it is. But I always just question that thing, like, is it an addict or is it just somebody that just fucking can't say no because they're in that situation? Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. I mean, like, say if we went to a party and the party ended, most people go home. Mm. And if I, but if I knew there's another party down the road, I'd feed my hind, go to that one. Yeah, I'm the same. And I always, think, always the last person out. But it was. I was always the last person out, yeah. no matter what. And it's like, that's when it's boring. But uh, I never enjoyed doing it on my own. And I'd rather spend the money and have someone with me doing the same shit. Mm. But like I said, I would always go to the extreme. So I'd, I would do it until my body couldn't take it anymore or my mm. bank was empty. That was it. I would never, I, I couldn't go out at £400, spend £100 and go home. Mm. It would all be gone. And that's where sort of bodybuilding helped me. Fill that void. Fill that void. And then it has this time as well. I mean, up until Christmas last year, I was heavily using again. Mm. Um, and enough was enough. I think me and Paige had a rough patch last year. No, 2000, fucking, I forgot what year we're on now. 2021. Yeah. And I, I went downhill. I mean, proper downhill. I, my mum, I remember mum and dad went on holiday to Egypt. I stayed at theirs and I'd just done it every day done it every day and there was other things I've done as well that I'm not proud of and yeah it been drug related and it's just I absolutely annihilated my body to the fact that it couldn't take it anymore and I ended up having a stroke and going to hospital did you really? I had a TIA yeah wow whereas my body just couldn't take it anymore so were you abroad when that happened? no my mum and dad were in Egypt I was at there oh sorry yeah. sorry I got you I, I, and um yeah. it, it was just oh, enough's enough and then we got back together who, who was with you when you had a stroke? no one I was on my own I just felt my body sort of going pins and needles all down one side. I got up, I couldn't talk, I couldn't walk. I was just walking to, I thought it was my blood sugar, so I was walking to the fridge to fucking eat some sweets or something. I remember just eating some sweets and it didn't stop. And then I remember just calling the ambulance straight away. And uh, it sort of eased off a little bit, but I, felt, I still felt numb. And um, I remember they, they came out and they said, we advise you to come to hospital. So I did, so I was in there for fucking us how long. And yeah, they said I had a TIA, which is caused by an unhealthy lifestyle. Mm. Of, which is a mini stroke, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I knew it was, like, shit was just got to stop. And then going back to that, I remember as well when I was with my ex-wife having a heart attack. I had a mini heart attack in the hospital. I remember yeah, having mum and dad by my bedside, friends crying. They weren't nice things to do. Mm. I never wish that upon anyone either. Mm. It, isn't, it isn't nice and there's like a time in your life where you think fuck it's been 10 years now like you've got to back up the bullshit and stop so if you don't mind me asking you this yeah. obviously put you right on the spot here what are you going to do mm -hmm. now given your life story mm -hmm. and where you've been and let's just be honest like your you know long amount of abuse Yeah. what are you going to do now to keep yourself away from that you know and that's not even me Mate, saying it scares, you need me. To stay it, scares away, it? it scares me every day because the only thing i know to take me away from that is bodybuilding now we all know bodybuilding with the peds and everything isn't a healthy sport either when you mix that with years of abuse of alcohol in your liver and drugs and then steroids it's not a fucking good mix and there's only so long you can do it for and what scares me is if i took that out of my life i don't know i don't know now i mean i couldn't tell you here i'm never gonna do it again I can't. I can't say that. I mean that. Just gone, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might be an event somewhere or a wedding, and I might. But I think I've got a different perspective on it. I don't think it'd ruin my life. It wouldn't ruin, ruin my bank balance, but I'd scared it would. If you know what I mean. Mm. I could take it or leave it. Whereas if I could do it and then stop, but then because I've justified that, I think oh, I could do it again and stop, and you start getting a taste for it again, and that's yeah. that's how it goes back downhill. Yeah. And it's done that with drink a little bit recently is the fact of I've just because we me and Josh have finished the show I've been allowed alcohol again but I didn't like alcohol because I went a year without it mm. so it's just be a social thing and I drink it I, mean, I don't like it and then because I've drunk a bit more and more now I've got a taste for it again and I like it and now I know now but I can see it now I can see where it's going so mm. I just put a stop to it yeah I spoke about Josh with that yesterday and he said he was going to say the same he's seen on my like Instagram stories of drinking Guinness and it's only going to go one way mm. and it's not causing me any fucking benefit to what I'm doing now and it's expensive <laughs> but I can see I can see patterns now instead of where before I couldn't I just fell straight back into it mm. but I think because I can see them I have time to stop it whereas before it just got hold of me and before mm. I knew it I was in, in a deep hole again 
One of the things I teach on my mind X, my, my mentorship, yeah, what I do is having that daily touchdown routine stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have anything like that in place? No, just Josh, really, and that's it. Sticking to a plan, keeping to a plan. Um, but now it's like I always used to listen to him. I used to be dead on point. I wouldn't miss a beat, and I haven't the last six weeks. So now, if that falls out of place, it's like what else have I got? Not a lot, really. Just my own willpower. Yeah, because it's worth you, and you can do this as a little like you know thing for yourself. Like, yeah, it's so powerful and so simple, but you can just write down when Brad gets up. What does he do? Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? What do you for your job at the moment? Uh, I want to fit windows and doors, and that's that's my career. Yeah, now. so it's an active yeah. job. You know, I, I've done that years ago. Um, but yeah, active job and everything. You're probably like eight five ish, are you, or whatever. Try and get off a bit earlier. Yeah, no, yeah, a bit earlier than that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> man! Yeah, to the about one was a minute. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? So, so, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's around the same sort of thing daily. Yeah. It's like, look, what do you do in the morning to get yourself up, to get you, to get your mind active and focused? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? To get your body active and focused. Obviously, that's the the food side of things. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, even just write three things in the morning, three things at night that that keep you. Um, under control, like controlling your lifestyle. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, obviously at night time, one of the best ones is just making sure that you stop socials and, you know, any yeah. sort, sort of like out of out of house interactions, you know, at a, at a good time. Me, me, me and Sarah always have this time where I used to hate watching films, but I now quite like watching them. I'm addicted to watching films. Yeah, you see, yeah. I, I, I hate them. I mean, we were talking about a famous someone yesterday and I don't even know who he is. What was his name? <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. God knows. I'm, I'm, I'm just sh shit with names and, 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 and uh, films and stuff. Um, but it, it's something I started to do and force myself into because I know it's just good downtime. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and But again, that's part of my routine, if you want to call it that. And then obviously, you know, supplements, things like that are part of your routine, aren't they? Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's probably worth you just looking at things like that. You know, there's like little things like this is how you wake up, this is how you go to bed. Yeah. Your day is like this. You know, your food will be planned because it just is. It is. That's what and that's, I think that's where prep's helped me massively and mentally. Whereas it was fucking gruesome being on prep. Mm. I was up every morning at five o'clock, doing an hour and a half walk out, doing my 10,000 steps, feeling fresh set up the day. And then that sort of just stopped because prep ended. Whereas I, I believe it, now it shouldn't have. I should have carried that on. Yeah, I agree. And it helped me massively mentally. Yeah. And I think a lot... The thing is, you're clearly a very routine-driven person. I am. I, still, I live by routine. So I would always question, and I know you're doing this to yourself anyway, but why would you then ever stop? You know, you're on and off-season. I'm, yeah. I'm not teaching you how to be a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah. I don't know bodybuilding. I'm just looking at it as a, as a focus. But you know what I mean? Like, you're on and off-season. They're going to be different, but they're still going to be routine, aren't they? Yeah. I think I think that's a key to it. I think it is. And I think what struggles for me now thinking about I probably shouldn't think about it now, but it's like is it has to be routine. If I miss a day at the gym, it fuck it, it messes my head. Like mm. psychologically I'll be depressed for the rest of that day. Yeah, yeah. And now life takes over, kids take over at some point. And there's gonna be times where I can't always make it to the gym and I won't be able to take make it competitively and that's that worries me. Mm. Because I have to take things to the extreme. Mm. And then what do I do? Yeah. Do I find myself back in the pub every night? Yeah, the answer is no, <laughs> but it, it worries me day on day. Yeah, because I know I know me. Yeah, and that's it. I think you know. I'd never try and tell you how to think or act or feel or whatever. But one of the things that stands out to me there is that you just need to g get more of a handle and manage it over the period. Yeah, that you're. Do you know what I mean? From when you're stopping competing isn't it because let's be honest you don't want to be like while i'm on track to compete i'm okay yeah because then you're going to fall off that cliff aren't you yeah yeah of course you know the cliff's there yeah and the cliff doesn't have to be a cliff it could be it could be a bridge by the time you get there yeah do you know what i mean to continue your life exactly and i mean like josh is a good example of that he's coming out on his own terms um out of the competitiveness well he's got it planned doesn't he exactly and that's a good thing to do yeah because it's, it won't it's amazing whatever he may struggle with mentally he can he can address yeah. because he's planned to do this whereas being told you can't do something that's when it hits hard away. and I'm f very fortunately for Josh he's never had any barriers that will make him fall off track yeah. and this is where drink and drugs come into come into the pattern and yeah. I think it's just a different mindset completely because you're you're doing something to stay away from something yeah. and I think that's where you find maybe fall out of love with something sometimes and I've done it many a times I've lost the passion for it 
and I have to go without it for quite a long time to, mm. to get it back. Mm. And well, that's a little bit. Like, I was thinking of analogies. It's just the way my brain works. But that's a little bit like having cocaine. Yeah. And then and then having sleep. What what they called sleep, sleep deprivation? No, what 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 are sleeping pills called? Like um, oh, diazepam. Yeah, whatever. Zopi, I remember. Yeah, I do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so it's like having cocaine and then having diazepam. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing two different directions. Stop the cocaine. Yeah. Do you is. know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. not saying literally cocaine because I'm not talking about that. But I'm, as an example of like when you're trying to balance something in life, yeah. rather than doing this because of this, yeah, like fix the problem it is. rather than overlap it with something it else. Because you bring that up, actually. I remember a time where I stopped the cocaine and started with Josh. First off, I got addicted to Zopiclone. A strong sleeping tablet, a very strong sleeping tablet. Is that tablet. like beyond diazepam? Yeah, yeah, but if you fight it, it's fucking amazing. It's like a euphoric feeling. Really? What, but, fight the sleep? Yeah, fight the sleep for, oh. for a bit. But what that does is it causes amnesia. So when you wake up in the morning and you look at your phone, you're thinking, fuck. Going through voice notes and all you can hear is, no, no, no. Like you can't even talk. Like you're sent to people. What the fuck have I sent to people? And you thought you were having a full oh, conversation. I thought I was having a full conversation. Wow. They're probably thinking, fuck this guy. is <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but can, can I try that? Just yeah. <laughs> But it served me very well in bodybuilding because yeah. I would, at 7 o'clock at night, I'd be knocked out till fucking 10 o'clock the next morning. And now from a sleep recovery point of view, it served me very well. We grew some massive amounts of mass in a short amount of time just because of my recovery. Mm -hmm. It was half the day recovering and half the day eating and training. Mm -hmm. and that's all it was. But then when you come out to get out of that hole as well, it's hard. So yeah, I've agree, always been yeah. addicted to something, no matter what. And this is the only time in my life where it hasn't been drink or drugs. Mm -hmm. but I think where the bodybuilding size fell off like, I'm always very stuck on it and at the minute I'm not and it needs to be mm -hmm. it needs to be especially to have a productive time for next year but that's a good realisation for yourself isn't it it is yeah so from, from today it was a, from yesterday it was a different start a new week and we'll get back on it so yeah. and right. that's it but I just think I think the whole grand scheme of things what the younger generation are coming into all this now thinking it's fucking wicked doing all these drugs and pills and Realization is to fast forward your life 10 years, you're not going to be in a good place. Mm. You're not. Don't get me wrong, I've got friends, they can take it or leave it. They can do cocaine once every six months, do a little bit, go home. Mm. It's not an issue for them mm. uh, because it's never become an issue for them. But it's only going to become an issue by doing it. Mm. So that, that That's why, you know, like I said to you earlier on, off camera, that's why I'm still sad to admit it now, but I lost my best mate to. Yeah you know, to that, to, to cocaine. And he's still alive, yeah. but he is not the person he was. And it's, you know, yeah. It always hurts me to think, I don't know. So it's, uh, yeah. it's like someone's died, but I can't put closure to him because he's actually still alive. Yeah. No, do, you, do you know what I mean? And, yeah, and, yeah. and the stuff that we've gone through and done together. And he seems sometimes. Don't see him at all. No, I ne never see him. Do you know what it's the same with me? I had a, I had a friend, he's my brother. I didn't say this off camera because I was obviously just waiting to now to exploring things because I'm sure everyone's going through it. He was, he was a brother to me. We were by each other's side. We'd done everything together. Like in golfing, shooting, everything. We would never be without each other drinking, but that's, we party together. We partied hard. Mm. And drugs drew us apart because there would be times where he would try to get clean and I was the, um, the antagonizer. I'd be like, come on, let's go out. And it went both ways. Mm. And in the, in the end, it was like, every time we go out, we, we've got to do it together. And we mm. did. And uh, I ain't seen him now for two years. Mm. Two years Is that your choice or his? Um, a bit of both. I mean, it'd only go one way if it, if it happened again. I'm sure we're in different places now, but he was like the best man at my wedding. He was, yeah. But now I don't I don't really think of it as much. Mm. Um, but at the time it was hard. It's like losing yeah. a family member, do you know no, what I mean? Of course, yeah. And then you lose all these friends when you go through drugs and... You realise when you've lost all these friends, friends in the drug circle that ain't your fucking friends, you actually come away from it. You're like, who the fuck have I got around me? I, I ain't got any like friends mm. that are there for you day in, day out. Who actually give a shit? All the friends cared about was getting on the session with you when you had a bit of money in your pocket or a bit of drugs in your pocket. Yeah. But then you never heard of them again when, no. when it was the other way around. No, and when, if shit at the fan, they're not there for you. Exactly. They don't give yeah. a shit. And it's yeah. like, I remember like there'd always be someone that didn't have money and sometimes it was me and you'd spend all this money out because you want everyone to have a good time mm. and then but when it was the other way around you had no money you'd fucking never you wouldn't hear of these people I'd right. come around and that 
not that it's, like, you should encourage that, but at the time, that you saw friendship in that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, it, it's the situation he was in. Yeah. He was making the best out of that. Because I was morally correct. Was it hurt me. I, yeah. I, found, I found it offensive. Like, it, it got to me a little bit. I was like, well, mm. why aren't you bothering me? And mm. I really know you, mate, but... Mm. Yeah, but now I've got I've got a whole different sort of scope of friends and yeah. I think I think the thing there what I want to just finish with on here before we break is that you know when you think about that scenario what you just said there, there's so many people that are in a situation in their life where they feel like their friend the friends that they're around right now yeah. are their actual friends and they've been there for life. Yeah, but they're actually not serving them well. Uh-huh. Now if they stood stood back and looked at them. They have a fear of thinking, but they're all I know. Yeah. And it's like it's like a program in your brain to think that's what they're programmed to understand that no, this is Billy who I grew up with. Yeah. You know, Billy that sells drugs. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like well, that's who I that that is my best friend. It's like he probably is. Yeah. But if you were to you know to look at your life as a whole, stand back and then rebuild your life. Yeah. Would you be putting him in your life? And that's the thing, isn't it? It's so hard, and you know, you 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 would have done this. And there's people that we listen that will relate to it as well. But there's so many people over the years that you become, or you 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 move away from as friends. And it's the right thing to do, but at the time it feels the wrong thing to do. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's not even because they're bad news. I don't necessarily, <coughs> mean, I don't necessarily mean bad people. No, no, it's, it's not. just because the direction you're going. Like, I mean, I, I've known dealers before, and they're generally fucking nice guys, yeah. and they're probably just doing it for a bit of money. I mean, they they didn't even do it themselves, and but that's something I've I've never stepped to, and never would. But it's like, yeah, not everyone's a bad person, but but you have to select the people around you. Of course you do, and that and that is the vital point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a massive part of who you're Because, you know, I've said this before and people don't like it when I say this because people always jump on it, but no one cares about you. No, only yourself. But yeah. it's like, if you, when your mum and that give you advice, like, stop hanging around with the people that do drugs. The thing is now, in this day and age, to be fucking quite sad, is you'd have no one, mate, because mm. one in two people do it. Mm. So what, what you've got to learn to do is not do it yourself and have yeah. some self-control because everyone's going to do it. Yeah. Everyone's going to be around you doing it. And why should they stop their lives to better yours? Unless they're a true friend, and yeah, it's different than if they're not coming up to you and saying, "No, go on, take this, take this." But you can't stop what other people do. Mm. You never will. No, but you need to learn to sort of have some self-discipline. I think that's one thing I'm still trying to manage. <laughs> no, of course, I think it'll forever be a thing. Of course. It will. <laughs> yeah. So you went into the army then, quite in an extreme position. I was did because obviously I was training at the time as well, so. I was heavily using steroids, heavily using cocaine. Went in as a bit of a lump, thinking that was going to sort serve me fucking well. I was like, yeah, I'm a big guy here, going to smash everyone's bits, mm. going to do the runs, everything. Mate, I was the last guy at the pack every time. Yeah. <laughs> and you got the skinny white guy at the front. <laughs> Just absolutely legging yeah. <laughs> rounds around people. Um, me getting shin splints at the back, fucking chuffing out my ass. <laughs> what was your mile off out of interest? Um, I got it down to. Minutes. No, <laughs> got it down to nine minutes. Nine minutes, something, but just under ten minutes. It's passive. But it was... mile, mile and a half. They've actually changed it now, haven't they? I don't think they do a mile and a half anymore. They're not. I, I, I'm pretty sure they've changed. It. I can't. I, don't quote me. I'm sure they have though. Um, you don't have to do press ups or sit ups anymore now either. Yeah, it's all changed, hasn't it's all it? Changed. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. Uh, I think. Well, they just had it demeaning to sit, make someone get down and do press ups, but they put you through a lot more shit than that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does make you laugh though, because it's. Yeah, I don't want to say the wrong thing and say it's become easier because that's not quite what I mean. But if they've changed it and made it easier by yeah. accident, then I don't understand why because, you know... You're you just going to get... filter more people out yeah, halfway exactly. through the process. Yeah, exactly. You're going to get a big shock halfway through, you know. Yeah. But anyway, that's a whole new fucking conversation. So, you join the Remy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, t- just tell me that. Cause obviously you so, went... I went into, went into my basic training. Um, flying through that and then got injured in my basic training uh, that was like three times longer than it was meant to be spent a lot of time at home week here week back and at the minute I, I just met someone who was my ex-wife at the time I think that played a lot on my mind mentally as well um, with the paranoia I was suffering at mm. the time what's she doing what's she, where's she going Yeah. And I think I made a lot of excuses at the time which I've never really admitted I think I um, made a lot of excuses at the time trying to get home when I could. Yeah. And it never served me well. And Which, 
We know that, right? No, of course. Anyone that's been in the army, you know you need that full attention. Yeah. Until, until you're further into your career and you've got more... Yeah, of, of course. Because uh, life in the army only gets easier. Tra- training's a, a shit for everyone. It's meant to be. Of course it is. Yeah. And uh, it's not like that. And um, But I think come, I come out on a medical discharge in the end. And that that mentally got to me for quite a long time. I'd say mm-hmm. a couple of years because I felt, I felt failed. <laughs> I felt um, like I was a failure, even though I couldn't help it. But at the time, underlining, I was happy about it because I was at home Yeah. with the partner. And I thought my paranoia was at ease. It, so, it sounds like quite a twisted thought process because you, you, you wanted to... catch 22. Yeah. What was your injury? Um, I had, at the time, I had a skin condition, a hydronite supertiva. And to treat that, I had to have Roaxan, which made me undeployable because it causes very severe depression and they couldn't put a rifle in someone's hands. No, yeah, <laughs> it works for suicide. Yeah. And it was also very hard to get. Um, so that made me undeployable. I then wrongly thought that I could go to the doctors and not tell the army that I was taking it and just take it through my own sources and buy it, um, which weren't going to turn out well either. So I took it on the chin. Um, but it was it was hard at the time because anything can cause it from sweat, abrasion, anything, and wearing all my gear, mm. it just made me come out in fucking like cystic, cystic boils that were painful in areas that you didn't want them to be. Yeah, um, like chafing areas. Yeah, it? and that's exactly yeah. where it was inside my groin. So did you get it now? Have you still got it now? I still get it now. Right, so, uh, so, not, so it's a lifetime. It is, but it's not severe now. I mean, a lot of things caused it. A lot of things cause it that you can help smoking, drinking, um, unhealthy foods. Um, but I'll always get it and it's always where I sort of abrasion or sweat is so I'll always mm. get it inside my groin um, in my armpit sometimes but I don't really get it as much so it affects my life now it affected my life quite bad I mean mm. I couldn't wear a seatbelt on the car because it ended up fucking rubbing or hurting and really well you couldn't get out of white shirts you just scared it's something to bleed and mm. it was shit but um, people like to say the piss and do what they got to do but they don't understand the severity of it mm. or what it does to you mentally as a man no, of course, yeah, yeah. Like, you come to be close with someone in the bedroom and you shoot yourself. Yeah. And they think it's them and it's not. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that got to me uh, coming out because it was something completely out of my control. Mm. Um, I would go back. I think Paige would fucking kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, because now it's different. I've got four girls that wouldn't understand. No. And I've been there every day for them and then see them go away weeks at a time. It'd be hard. And then you've got to incorporate tours into that. and mm-hmm. Because you ain't got really got a choice. Um, but I feel like my time now, my age has got on a bit. It's probably behind me. And it's like, I, I, I do bodybuilding. You can't mix the two either. No, yeah, yeah so, I, agree, I agree. But with the army, it gives you, gives you structure, it gives you a lifestyle. It keeps you, it gives you everything that's hard to get on the outside world. Mm. I don't think... Do you feel that served you quite well because of obviously the type of character you are and what you let's say need yeah you know because obviously a lot of people we spoke about this earlier briefly but a lot of people say, used to say to me because I'm uh, so outspoken and you know yeah uh, rebel on certain things and do things my way how the fuck did you stick up the army but it's different mate it it's is like, isn't it it's like I've got a very like leader role behind me I can take charge of people mm. I can give them a shout and give them motivation some places that don't fit and the army is exactly where it fucking fits yeah and I've never had a problem with authority as such as... Like in the army, I didn't even think about drugs. Not once, not one minute, one second. Because you've got mm. so many people so around So did you, you go completely clean at that point? And just... I had to. Right. I had to. So cause... that served you well in that respect, right? It did. And you had so many people around you, like-minded people, doing what you do. You just fell into a different sort of world. Mm. Fell into a different world. And um, I think, yeah, I used drugs a lot in my life as a coping mechanism for different issues. Because where I've had so many curveballs, I've used it for a coping mechanism every time. Mm. And I just I don't do that anymore. I I try to use the gym as yeah. a coping mechanism. And it is, or Paige. Like Paige is so supportive. Like there's not, we're very much alike as a couple, and that can be bad. It can be good, and it's it's served us well and served us not. Mm. But she's so supportive, and I use her a lot. I use her a lot. We both struggle mentally with things, and we sort of use each other as a therapist. I can give her fucking amazing advice that she would hear off a genuine therapist, and she has. She's gone to the doctors, and they told her exactly what I told her. Mm. So you're right, but I don't listen to it, and, yeah. and I wouldn't. And she does the same with me. 
Yeah, it's always hard in a relationship like that, isn't it? Like, of course it me, is. Me, me and Sarah have this. Um, we used to do it at home, but we started this week doing it in the office here because it's nice to get out of the house. Don't mind the office. We have this. <laughs> we turn the lights down low. Um, we play find the sausage. Um, <laughs> the magnifying glass in your hand. I have to stick. Yeah, I have to stick the heater on though. But no, so but we 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 come here and we just. It's a bit of a free for all, to be fair, for an hour where we discuss personal things, things that may have pissed each other off in the week. Yeah. You know, um, development things, business things. If I've got, I mean, obviously you could see that board right now. There's a lot of things that we're focusing on right now, uh, you know, on, on the line my next stuff. I, I might just throw a few things that are about that. She talked to me about her property stuff. You know, it's a nice little like connection thing that we just have a little bit of a. Yeah. It, but specifically putting that time aside has helped us because. You know, rather than doing it at home, sitting over, like eating, you know, yeah. eating dinner and like, oh, da, 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 da. yeah, we you know, don't, you're not said, ready for it, are you? We've said this the last couple of days. We don't make time for ourselves as such without the kids, and when we do have time without the kids, we just sit there and fucking watch telly because it's nice to sit yeah. peacefully, but we shouldn't. And it's like we've we've come to the conclusion that we need to go out and do a set thing maybe every two weeks and sort of develop ourselves because we we know what issues we have and we we go through them. And we try and resolve them, but it seems like they last for two days, and then you fall back into your sort of pattern. Yeah, it's very easily done in family life when of you go to it work. Is. But it's it's how well disciplined you are at what you plan. Yeah, you know, um, I'm plugging line my legs a lot today, and I don't mean to, but it's just because it fall into it a lot. But one of the things, well, there's, there's a couple of worksheets that I do with people where I get them to plan everything you want to achieve over the next year, yeah, and then plan when you're going to take the action points for it. And then monitor it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And mate, it's so simple. I think you'll tell a lot about a person when they put their when they plan to take action. And a lot of them will put first January or next week. Yeah. And it's, it's never now. Fucking Monday. It's never now. Yeah. It's <laughs> never now. And no, no, it's true. It's just having that mindset to be self disciplined. <clears throat> and I am a lot more self disciplined than what I used to be. Jesus. I don't think I'll ever be perfect. I'll always have niggles here and fuck ups there. But as a whole. Like, I'm a good dad. Like, I look after my girls. I'm a good partner. I'm a loyal partner. I'll always be there for her. And I could never say that about myself before. Mm. So it's, I'm saying already, time on, two things about myself that, huge that I never progress, was. Yeah. And they're not two things that come overnight mm. as well. I mean, me and my daughter, the 12, Lily now, I've got a better bond. Because I never used to see her or take the time to listen or everything else too busy doing what I want to do. Mm. And that's changed massively. Yeah. So and she's learning so much now at that age, man. Like, it yeah. is, and that's just where bonds get recuperated. And like, the same, my mum and dad. I mean, we lost me and my dad. We always had a good bond. We'd go out doing things together, golf and shit, and that got lost mm. because I started going out and doing shit I shouldn't be doing. And then I'm like, well, Dad, why didn't you spend time with me? But then when you think it's probably the mm. fucking way round because that, and I had no interest to me. That had no benefit to what I wanted to do at that time. Mm. And the bond of mum and dad, my mum got lost. And much as she's always been there for me, it got lost. And now uh, we've all started getting that back as a family and it's, really, it's, quite, it's quite nice. It's quite no, pleasure. it's good. Yeah. No, it is. It is. Because, you know, the, I always say that whole, like, it's not that you've not heard it before, but you know, like, the whole um, blood is thicker than water sort of thing. Yeah. It, I disagree with that whole process of, like, you should always put blood first because, yeah. you know, life throws things at us. And you realise sometimes the better people are not the people that are necessarily family. Yeah. You know, but I think that the thing that always comes it always comes in the end that in the end that the people shine back through, don't they? Yeah. And in your circumstance, it was your family. Yeah. Which is amazing. Exactly right? because they they were there for my shit and they were there to see the man I've become now. And that's nice because I would fucking I would never forgive myself if I become a better man, and they had nothing to do with me. Yeah. I'd yeah. live in regret all my life. Yeah. All my life and um. The same with Paige, she saw me as an absolute mess. And now she saw me as a man I am today who bought my own car and got a good, good job and look after the kids and support for the family. And mm. I'm glad that they gave me that time to, and, and belief that I could do it because probably without them, I'd probably be fucking dead. Mm. And that's the truth. Mm. Or not in a good way. Yeah, no, I agree. So, you know, when you look at obviously like, you know, all, your life, you look back and you talk. I mean, obviously, we've spoke a lot today about yeah. it, and it always brings things up for people, doesn't it? Like, if we were to try and say, like, for you to give advice to people that are 
I'm trying to think of a person because, you know, let's just say, we don't want to make this too vague, right? But let's just say someone that's dealing with a lot of drugs at the moment. Yeah. Not dealing as in, so yeah, yeah. as in, you know, they're, they're taking a lot of drugs. And they're, they're not seeing it for what it is because they're just enjoying the moment. Yeah. You know, we all know what that feels like to enjoy the moment. Yeah. Like, we've all been in situations where right now is fucking great and then you look back and go, why the fuck did I do that? Like, yeah. But what, what, what would your, like, sort of, like, life advice be as such to... Well, maybe look at what you got around you at that time. You've got your family around you, having fun with drugs, with your friends around you. That, that they will slowly drop off one by one. And it'll be it'll be the people closest to you last that drop off, but they will eventually. And that's when you know shit hits home. Mm. And this, these drugs aren't gonna serve you well. They're not gonna serve you well. It might be fun, but they're gonna rinse your bank and you're gonna get there later in life and think how much money I could have had, what I could have spent on, the relationships I could have kept. Or the, the biggest one for me is I could have been a better dad. And me now enjoying parenthood for what it is, I wish I did then. Mm. I wish I had the memories of, yeah. Take some time, man. I just wish I had the memories of, with my first doing that. So, uh, because the way I feel it, I feel it's a spitefulness in myself. I feel like, why have they got the best of me and she didn't? Because mm. she deserved it. Mm. So, I, I always thought when we just had our baby, it's like, this is my time again. And I shouldn't have had to think like that, but I did. So, I've made sure I've put my fucking all into it. And I've been the best dad I can be because she will never have to deal with that. And I mm. feel some a life, life time of regret in that. So, because I was to see Lily on looking, thinking, I don't live with you. and. I don't really see you and it's shit mm. it's shit but all I can do now is be the best dad I can be to all of them and I am mm. so you can the thing is it's like it, it's it's one of those situations where you the thing that you've lost yeah can never be you can never live that moment again no you should make sure it don't happen again this is it then this is where I'm going right yeah so we, we you know I'm sure you've thought about this anyway but it's just to bring it to the table yeah what what's happens happened because we can't turn back time. But you sound like you got your shit together. You sound yeah. like do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. and and and, and the, yeah, what solution. what you yeah what you're capable of right now is much more powerful than trying to bring something back that you can. Yeah, bring of course back. it is. And I mean, like there's been times in my life where I have thought about suicide and that. But I look at the other scale. I'm a guy that enjoys life. I love life. Yeah. And I love my kids and. If it weren't for them or I didn't enjoy life, I wouldn't be here now. 100% I wouldn't be here now. Mm. I've had attempts at doing it, and I, but I enjoy life, and that's why I've never really delved down that dark road. Um, but then I've been through times where I'm thinking, I'm not enjoying life, and what's the fucking point? Mm. I'm not bringing any purpose to anybody here. Nobody's getting anything off me. I'm just a fucking, just something that's here. I've got no purpose at this moment in time. But that's also your current mind state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got strengths, and I don't think if you don't exercise them, you'll never you'll never excel. Everyone's gonna excel in something, but mm. it's actually exercising what you're strong at to do that. And everyone's got it, no matter whether you believe it or not. Mm. I mean, no one's not good at anything. No, of course. But that's their mindset as well. Yeah. So I've I've, I've been told from the start I'd, I'd be a fucking pro now in bodybuilding if I stuck to it from day one. Hundred yeah. percent, I would. I've got the genetics for it. I've got the the power for it and um but I've wasted my time and now it's also getting to another life regret where time's getting on I'm 30 years old nearly and you sort of go past your peak around that time mm. and that's too late for me now to do that mm. so I've got to deal with that but I'll make sure it never happens to anything else mm. and so but but as well it's controlling the the controllables isn't it like yeah you're you're in so much control compared to what you were yeah like you're a completely I, 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 I've known you for a very short time, so I'm not judging what I knew of you because I didn't know nothing of you. Yeah. But just what you've said, you clearly were a completely different person there. Yeah, 100%. Than you are now. I'm about to never be that person again. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with someone I want to be with for the rest of my life. Plans to get married. We've got a holiday coming up, and I just want to enjoy it. Whereas before, I've let drinking drugs get a bit of me on every fucking holiday I've been on. And I've been, mm. yeah, it's just a completely different time of my life now. I'm a much more sensible person now as well. I think the tables have turned, but I don't get that from someone else. I'm like, grow up. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I, but yeah, I've put it out there so many times. Yeah. 
I, I would uh, I would dig deeper into that addictive behaviour as well. Do you know what I mean? Because it's I mean, I'm, I'm I'm saying this as a bit of brother advice. Yeah. Because you know a lot of the things that you say, I feel like I was once in that that like. You know, you know, you know the sperm that can't fucking go forward. Yeah, it goes round, and he thinks he's fucking doing the right thing. He's like, I'm with all these other guys, and he ain't, he ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's the one that's making it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and then there's some champion at the end, like fucking made. That's how I felt for a very long time. Yeah, like I knew I had a massive spark. I've got some fucking massive drive. Yeah, I'm very switched on, powerful. You know, you got all these positive things, but the connection was just wasn't quite connect do you know what I mean it wasn't quite yeah. connecting to, to what you've seen as success I mean sometimes it could be what you're seeing as successful yeah isn't success do you know what I mean no I know you know and, and I think that's that. this is this isn't me advising you mate I'm, I'm doing it more of an open conversation like it. it's I'd never I'd never tell you what to do because it's just what I learned through my period of, of, of discovering about you know how lost I felt to how connected I could be. Yeah. But I think I think like when when you're going through this whole lost stage, one of the things that you you realise is that family is so important, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, and, and uh, whether think, that's your big family or little family. Yeah, mine's of course my it is. Mine's, mine's both. It's it's my mum, my dad, and uh, yeah, my little family at home. But yeah, they're most important to me. And without them, I don't. I, I couldn't see life without them. Mm. And fortunately, I'll never have to. No, good. So, one, one of the things I love to do, and we, we sit down and, and do it, we were doing it again the other night, is uh, just planning stuff in the diary. Yeah. Like, this year, we've been to a Santa Grotto the other day, we've got another two or three coming up. I mean, yeah. It's a bit overkill, but actually it's like, you know what? <laughs> you just like sitting on Santa's knee, mate. <laughs> You're not allowed anymore, are you? No, no, it's shame, <laughs> You have to stand next to him. <laughs> bit awkward. <laughs> You'll sit on mine instead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, do, do you know what I mean? It, it's part of those things, isn't it? Because yeah. then you know you're doing your bit. You know you're... You know you're serving your family yeah yeah 100% um, I mean Christmas ain't fun now is it for, for us for, for the kids well yeah this is it isn't it you, you, you it. get to that point don't you where you realise that you know my mum I think she's got the hint now yeah. she, she, she still bought me like 20 shit presents I'm like mum if you're going to buy me something just give me a voucher I know you always just get a main present and like little bits and like the main present sort of disappears you know, she gets me like 20 funny ones I'm like just, just give me a voucher or something. I don't even get the links Africa anymore it's like fucking I moaned about it at the time and now I'm no, shattered I know yeah, yeah grass is always greener but Brad look man I really appreciate it today yeah no it's, thank uh, you you know it's been awesome to meet my uh doppelganger <laughs> well, I've, got a bit, I've got a bit of hair coming now but yeah no it's uh yeah it's been, it's been amazing man and i you know, appreciate you opening out on the stuff you have yeah of today. course i just hope like someone sees it and mate it might cover a lot of subjects but it's going to relate to somebody no 100 percent, mate. and a lot of people especially me back then would have thought shut up i'll do what i want and they're gonna yeah but there might be that one person it's just like a big big dick man mentality isn't it yeah of course it's like you know like i'm fine i know what i'm doing yeah you know, again, without going, off on, without, without going off on a tangent, we was literally on about it yesterday, but it's like, when I was 16 going around town, I used to start fights with blokes, Yeah. you know, and, and, and they didn't fight back, so I thought I was fucking Superman. But actually, yeah. they're probably thinking, I don't need to punch you, mate, you, you're a kid. Do you know what I mean? And it, it's that mentality to have it. You, yeah, know yeah. I mean? like, you know, you grew up thinking you're the big dick, it's like, you're not, mate, just... Nah. You know, you're a small fish in a big pond. Yeah, you know, and we still are, man. Like, you just have to... You always you know. will be, and that's why you've got to do the best you can do. Yeah. So, what have you got coming up next? Yeah. Show-wise, you're... Show-wise will be September next year. Yeah. We're aiming for. Yeah. Um, obviously, just get my arse in track now, and uh hit this off-season effectively, um, because I think it was my prep that backtracked that a little bit and binge eating for six mm -hmm. weeks after, but we got that under control. Uh, so, it'll be September next year, do a few shows back-to-back. Um, then the finals. Um, February, we've got a holiday for me and the missus. No kids, just us. Nice. And then, yeah, so we'll plan some other things in between. Nice, so, amazing. Got a good year planned. Where can people follow you, find you? And... Um, I'm on Instagram, it's under Brad Perry. Yeah. Um, that's really my main platform. Don't really use anything else. Um, but on there, I've, I have have people message me about my training and say that I was boxing. My story's on there. I, I've never, I've always been transparent. I've never sh hidden away from my drug abuse or where mm. I was in life. Pe maybe people find it a typical subject, but 
like we all have problems, mate. We all no, no. sit on the same toilet. It's, it's one of the, yeah, but That's it's one it. of them. It's one of the biggest reasons people follow me is because I'm honest. Yeah, like and I, I believe. Love it. Yeah. I believe it's the way to be, isn't it? Like, what? What's the point in trying to go? Yeah, be like me, but you don't know half of it. Yeah, and this is exactly. people perceive it differently like, on Instagram. I hate it and I love it because yeah. it reaches people, but people compare themselves to it in a massive. And not that's another subject, but people live their life by mm. competing with people they don't even fucking know. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. Or trying to have yeah. some form of validation, and, and they failed before they even started. Exactly. But yeah, mate, appreciate it. Thank you, you very you're much, a good man. Thank, Thank you very much. Ah, cheers, buddy.